Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the IFR routes and the VFR routes. We're gonna look specifically at the differences between an, uh, an aircraft that is flying IFR and an aircraft that is flying VFR. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from PilotClimb.com. I'm a training captain on the Boeing 737 and I help you to become a better pilot. I upload lots of contents every week, so if you don't want to miss the next one, consider subscribing to the channel. Okay, so let's talk about the IFR flight and the VFR flight. I bring up this video because uh, last week I made a um, series of three videos where I did a full flight on the Boeing 737 simulator using the prepared 3D, okay? Many of you ask me questions about the IFR route, which sort of route I was loading on the FMC of the aircraft, okay? And why I was actually loading that route in there, okay? With the waypoints, with the departure, with the arrival and so on. So what I thought that would be appropriate is to perform, to do a video where I talked about the difference between a route on an IFR flight and a VFR flight, okay? So in order to make sure that you understand what you have to fly when you fly IFR, which route you should follow when you fly IFR, and which route you should follow when you fly VFR. Okay, in order to make sure that this is clear, we're gonna jump into the whiteboard, and then I will uh, draw some uh, the, uh, I, an hypothetic IFR flight and an hypothetic VFR flight. Okay, so it is, first of all, in order to understand in full this content, we need to know what a VOR is, a VOR DME, a NDB is, and so on. I'm gonna make a lot of videos about these uh, ground stations very soon, okay? So, without further ado, let's go into the whiteboard and I will uh, we'll draw a VFR flight and IFR flight, okay, the route, okay? So, by looking at the whiteboard here, okay, I can actually, we're gonna divide the whiteboard into two sections, here we go. Sorry for the drawing, guys, it's not gonna be perfect, but the most important thing is that you get the, the, the concept that is clear, okay? So, we're gonna write down here the IFR and in here the VFR, okay? So, beautiful. So, let's say, let's imagine that two aircraft are doing the same exact flight from the airport A, which is this one, okay, A, and they have to land in the airport B, all right? So, they, are, they have to do the same route, okay, flying from the airport A, they are the same, okay, and then they have to land on the airport B, okay, which is in the same location, okay. But what an EFR flight has to do, what a pilot flying the EFR has to follow in order to fly from A to B, and what a VFR pilot has to do in order to fly from A to B. Okay, let's analyze first the IFR flight, and then we go into the VFR, and then we discuss the differences, okay? So first of all, the IFR flight, okay, the IFR, IFR pilot will follow this ground station, okay? So the v IFR, instrument flight rules, okay, since it's an instrument flight rules, the pilot will follow the instrumentation most of the time, okay? So, for example, let's say you are in the airport A, we take off, and what we need to do, we need to, for example, intercept a radar from a VOR, arrive to a certain distance and radar from that VOR, then turn right, for example, join another radar from another VOR, and then go straight in another radial and then arrive at this point here, okay? But how do we know how, to f how, how do we know which radial we should follow? It's because in the, it's in the text of the ICD chart that we've got on the FR, okay? I made lots of videos about SID, how to brief an SID, how to fly an ICD chart, so go on the channel and check them. I try to link some of them in the description below. But anyway, for example, if we locate a VOR in here, Okay, this is a ground station, a VOR, okay? So we can actually say that after departure, you can follow the radial 360, okay? Let's, let's say that this is the north, okay? So, so after departure, follow the radial 360 until this point. This point, you can actually uh, make that point because if you have a radial and a distance, you can actually make a correct point, a waypoint, okay? So if we put a VOR and a DME on the same location, so this may be VOR, DME, we have the radial from the VOR and the distance from the DME. So what will happen is that after departure, for example, you intercept the radial 360 from this VOR all the way down from to 15 nautical miles from the DME. So 
real tricks three or 15 nautical miles. So this is just, I make up this example, okay? Every SID is different, every SID has got different radius, different uh, distances and so on. Then, once you reach this point, if we've got another VOR in here, for example, okay, we can actually say, once on radial 360 all the way up to 50 nautical miles, start right, intersect this radial there from this VOR, okay? So th this radial is around 45, okay? So intercept and follow radial 0, 45, until this point there. And this point can be uh, until 20 nautical miles, sorry, until 20 nautical miles from this VOR, okay? So as you can see on AFR flight, the pilot actually flies radius, distances, or flies using the uh, inertial navigation or the, uh, using the LNAV basically, okay? So as you can see, the FR pilots, they base their position on ground station on the, or on the, on, the, on, the, on the position that the aircraft is actually tailing the pilots, okay? So as you can see, we don't look outside trying to spot where we are by looking outside the coastline, the cities, and so on. Okay, so this first part of the flight is called standard instrumental departure. Okay, and again guys, I'm not gonna go in deep how the standard instrumental departures are because I've got, I made lots of videos about that. Okay, so check that out on my channel and you will see, you will have a clear understanding of what it is. Then we, we arrive to a point in here, let's call it uh, point, uh, point uh, 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 terto, okay, terto point. Okay, then from there to the IFR pilots, okay, from the last point of the SID, we should, we should join an airway, okay? An airway, we have to think about like an highway on the cars, okay? The airways are corridors that are in the air that allows you to fly straight to a point that uh, you want, okay? So for example, from Terto, we just fly on the airway that goes like that, for example, that's called Uniform uh, Zulu, one nine or two, okay, I'm just making all these uh, letters and numbers, okay, but I want to make sure that it's clear for you. So from there to join the uniform zero one nine or two until this point in there, we can call it Bummer, for example, okay? And this point, from that point in there, okay, your target is after you fly the airway, you get close to your destination. What you want to do, you actually want to join a star, a standard arrival. The standard arrival is a standard route that allows you to leave the airway and start to approach your uh, destination airport. Okay, so from Bummel, we join the arrival that actually take us from Bummel to a point there. Okay, then maybe you you continue straight like that, then you have turned right, for example, for uh, traffic separation purposes, okay? And now is it structurated? It's the same from Bummer. If you have a VOR in here, for example, okay? We know that after Bummer, once we intercept this radial inbound, we, we actually have to leave this upper 0102 highway to go into the arrival, the standard arrival. So this part from here to there is actually the start. And normally 90% of the time is the structure of the stars are the same of the SID but opposite because the SID make us take off and get uh, to a certain altitude, the stars are made for us to start the descent, okay, and approach our destination airport, okay. So as you can see, we've got uh, the SID for departure, then the cruise phase is the uh, airway, okay, airway, and then the arrival phase is the star, standard arrival, okay? And then again, guys, I'm not gonna go in deep into the star because I made a video about that, okay? And then the airways as well, we talked about, about okay, there are big corridor in here. Then once you get very, very close to your destination, you need another procedure. And the procedure that you need, is you need a procedure that allows you to land. And this procedure is called approach. So from a specific point that we can call it whatever you want, okay, you can just make up a, a, a name. Let's call it uh, David point, okay? From David point in there, okay, here we go. So David, okay, we can actually join this approach procedure. And the approach procedure maybe, maybe make you to turn left again and intercept the LS and land, okay? So this part from the initial approach fix e -A -A -I -A -F, okay, initial approach fix, all the way down to the landing is called approach procedure, okay? And the approach procedure, guys, again, I made a lot of video where I talked about this procedure, so go there and, uh, and check them out, okay? So, as you can see, we've got, here we go, this is the approach procedure. The approach procedure will, will take you from the initial approach fix all the way down to the landing.
okay? So normally an EFR flight then has got, after takeoff, has got first of all to follow ISID, okay? Then the SID has to end up at the entrance point of an airway, okay? So the second thing is the airway, okay? Then the third thing, once you get close to your uh, destination airport, you should follow the star, okay? The star, the standard arrival. And then the fourth and last thing in order to, to land, okay, you should fly the approach procedure. Approach, here we go. So as you can see, this is the sequence that an, a pilot flying IFR has to follow, okay? Take off, you fly the SID, you join the airway, you get to the point where you join the standard arrival, and then you get to a point where you get to the initial approach fix, and you should f uh, follow the uh, approach procedure, which could be ILS, which could be a VOR, and I made lots of video about this, okay? So again, if there is any questions about that, just leave me a comment below. But anyway, before asking questions, uh, if you check on my channel, I've got lots of content about these things, okay? Fantastic, this is how the IFR flight, the uh, IFR pilot does, okay? Another part that is not uh, red, doesn't have the IFR, IFR ratings and has to fly from A to B using VFR rules, okay, what it will do after takeoff, okay, he has to join these gates, okay, every, uh, normally the VFR airports, okay, the airports that are, has got VFR, they have these gates, these gates are, are are points where the pilot that just take off has to fly there, okay, in order to make sure that the ATC has got an idea pretty much where the aircraft will go after departure, okay, since it's a VFR, visual flight rules, the pilot actually can do almost what he wants, okay, but on the departure, after departure, since on the departure, the, the, the airport, they have a lot of traffic at low altitude in the close proximity, they want to standard that, standard that, they want to make this route a little bit more standard. So what happens is that you actually, after departure, you should fly to a gate, okay? And then the gate normally is over a city. So let's call it, this, uh, there is a city in here. So you know that after takeoff, you should turn right, for example, and fly over this city. But the difference compared to the IFR flight is that you don't base this part on a, a VOR, DME, you just base this, okay? The, part, the first part of the route going into the gate, but looking outside, looking at the rivers, looking at the cities, looking at uh, the, the streets, the highways and so on, okay? So from there, okay, from the gate, once you leave the VFR gate, okay, and again, just look on the chart of your area, okay, to find out what these gates are on your local airports, okay? From there on, the, the pilot actually base the position just trying to f figure it out where the cities are, okay, let's say there is a city in here, so it's gonna fly from here to this city there, then there is uh, another point in here which is, uh, I don't know, normally, normally we fly from city to city, okay, but anyway, you might even a uh, small town or big lakes or rivers, whatever, okay, as long as they are clear, okay, because you have to spot them from the aircraft that, and you're gonna overfly them. So there is a lake here, for example, that goes very big in here. So you're gonna fly from the city all the way down to the lake and then so on, okay. So what you do, you're actually basing your route based on uh, the visual, okay, since, because that's why they are called visual flight rules, because you're basing your navigation on, on visually, looking outside, okay, by looking outside. So you're basing your navigation on the cities, basing your navigation on lakes, basing your navigation on coastlines as well, because the coastline, if you have to fly from A to B, and the two, the departure and the destination aerodrome are on the coastline, then you, you simply follow the coastline, you're gonna get to your destination, okay? So this is the main thing, this is the, the main difference that on the FR part, okay, you follow, you fly following the ground station and the onboard navigation system, and you don't look outside, you don't base your positions on cities, towns, uh, roads, and so on. However, on the VFR flight, you only, uh, you should base your uh, navigation looking outside, spotting cities, uh, sp spotting uh, points that you can really see, okay. So these are mainly the, 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 the biggest differences, okay? And then once you get close to your destination, you can either approach and land straight or you join the VFR uh, traffic pattern, okay? So the, the downwind, okay, for example, the base start and then the land, okay? And then you land, okay? So these are the main differences because in the previous video that I made last week where I actually flown, some of you asked me, but why are you uploading these uh, Airways, these seeds, these starts, and so on. And that's why, because we were flying IFR, 
okay? If you have to fly VFR, you should base your navigation looking outside and uh, trying to uh, figure it out where the cities are. I, I mean, last time I've flown uh, VFR was uh, 10, 11 years ago, okay, so it's a long time I haven't flown VFR, but I remember that sometimes, normally if you base your navigation looking uh, at outside, trying to spot the right city, trying to spot the, the right VFR waypoint that you choose when you were actually preparing your flight, it was quite useful because normally from one city to another city there is a nice uh, highway in between. So. Normally, if you get to a city and then there is another city that is in the right way to get your, your destination, you might just follow the, the highway, you know? That's, I remember we were doing something like that sometimes, okay? I've been flying VFR all over Europe in my, in my uh, past career, okay? I, because I was flying for the skydivers and sometimes I was flying dogs as well around Europe with an aircraft, okay? So, by the way, guys, I hope you now understand what is this, uh, what are the differences between IFR and the VFR flights, okay? What are the differences between the IFR route and the VFR route? If you have any questions, just leave a comment below and then I will help you out. Also, go to pilotclimb.com where you can subscribe for free pilot training content. Next week, I'm gonna make another flight using the Boeing 737 and we're gonna look at different scenarios and we're gonna try to talk about different things such as weather, such as uh, uh, low visibility and so on. Okay, I wish you a great day, I wish you a great weekend and I'll see you on the next one.